Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring George Tulianos, the good doctor, brought to you by his book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, available on Amazon.com, over 700 pages, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PEDs. This is the only weekly show you have access to a medical doctor who is also a former champion bodybuilder. I want to remind you also, if you're on Amazon getting books, get my book, Real Bodybuilding. Now all the way from Athens, Greece, where it's very late at night, please welcome Dr. George Julianos. Hey, Doc. Hello, everyone. Okay. So uh, I wanted to lead off with a, a question for you because I just did a video on this kid. I'm going to show you his Instagram. First of all, I think he's lying about being 14, but that's not important. I'm, I'm hearing that he's, he's actually 18. Um, but can you see him now? Yeah. Well, yeah, he looks 14. I mean, he looks like a teenager. But listen to me. Some some people are going to support uh, are going to defend him and say, hey, what about Arnold? I mean, he started using drugs when he was 16. Listen, Arnold is one out of a million genetics. Arnold at 16 became Mr. Euro uh, Europe. Do you think this guy is going to be Mr. Europe in two years? No. This guy is, is not even called a bitch boy, you know. Anyway... Uh, Arnold had tremendous genetics, and back then Arnold just used dianamol testosterone. This guy's supposed to use him. Yeah. Now, my medical point is, first of all, when you're 14, you're not mature enough. I mean, how many years are you training? Okay, you're not mature enough to receive any gear. Second of all, the skeletal system has not grown. The epiphyseal plates are still growing. By using steroids, uh, the epiphyseal plates are um approaching each other and then you're done with your reaching your height and also your hormonal environment is still growing you know you have not reached your uh your peak mm -hmm. so it's catastrophic sup uh, suppressing your own production when you're supposed to be at your peak you know as a natural guy yeah yeah that you you mentioned something very important because you know most guys want to be tall we don't want to be short but if you're going to be, say, six foot, but you're 14 and you start taking trend and you're only 5'4 or something, isn't you're it? You're going to be 5'6, that's all. That's horrible. For your whole life, you're never going to get the, t the height you were supposed to have. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen, you know, we've both probably have seen young guys on steroids, teenagers, losing their hair at 18, 19 years old. I've seen that. Another thing, this guy, when he's going to become a soldier, you know, uh, we know troops that uh, face the, the army at age 20. When he's cutting the gear in the army, he's going to become hypogonadal and he's going to feel suicidal, you know. So it's not a good idea because after a couple of years, he has to stop it. He's obligated to stop it during the army, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know if he's going to go in the army, but even then. In the army for what? <laughs> Come on. It's talking about, you're talking about shutting down your, your normal... Hormone yeah, production. Yes. It's, and also, uh, testicular failure, spermatogenesis. You cannot become a father if you kill your sperm sites when you're a teenager. Come on. So I'm saying, if if you started taking steroids at 14 in large amounts, is it possible you could shut down your production and need TRT by the time you're 18 or 19 years old? No, I don't think so. But you will definitely suppress it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I mean. I did that whole video, and you know, no one's going to listen to me. I'm just this old has been body. This is, this is nobody building. Everybody who's uh, radical about the, the the use of gear knows every coach you ask, uh, Olympia coach, go first, natural and reach your genetic potential. And then, if you have a good reason, take the gear and break your plateau, you know, your genetic potential. So uh, yeah. This guy obviously needs more gear to mature, okay? And then he can use, for a good reason, um, the, the, the gear. Anyway, I think he will face uh, obstacles in his life with his na uh, natural production, sperm production, uh, the, the height he will eventually reach. And when he's about to stop the gear for whatever reason, he will collapse mentally and physically. Mm. Yeah, I mean... It's I, I hate to see anybody this young, if he really is 14, but I'm sure there are 14-year-olds out there on steroids right now, unfortunately, because the social media wants them to get these quick results. Yeah, Patrick, you know Patrick Arnold, of course. 
Yeah. Patrick, Patrick Arnold made a comment on one of the posts about this this kid, and he said, uh, "Young guys do get better results from steroids than guys who do it later in life, but they get much worse side effects." This kid we're looking at is covered. I, don't know. I know youngsters because the receptors are fresh; mm -hmm. they can suck up the gear more. But definitely, uh, their muscular system is not mature enough. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they have fresh joints. But, I mean, you reach your peak in your mid-20s or 30s. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to call bullshit on this kid because he's trying to say this is one month. He looks much older in the second. It doesn't look like a month older. It looks like he's he's a few years older. But whatever. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Speaking of all the side effects, I doubt if in your 20s your liver uh, is, uh, let's say, uh, it's, it's burned up rather than your mid thirties or forties. Obviously your, your organs are fresh, but the point the natural production is a really bad thing to suppress when you're hitting towards your puberty, you know? Yeah. And I mean, one final point I think we need to discuss is trend is one of the most powerful, but one of the most toxic steroids you can possibly ever use in your life. But it's not simply calculated, but has deleterious effects on the nervous system to the natural suppression. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, we, we talk about people going crazy on trend and getting very aggressive, and you know, just they li literally messes with your your mental health. And I think someone this young, teenagers are already going through enough stuff, going through puberty, and you know, become trying to change from boy to man. I, I can't even imagine adding all this stuff into the mix like this. But oh well. All right, well, we've we've said what we could say, Doc. So I thank you for doing your best to try to. Talk some sense into anyone out there who's very young, who might be thinking about using steroids way before, you know, we experts and more experienced people would, would want to see you doing it. You know, what, what's, we don't want to, we're not encouraging anyone to use steroids, but what's a, what's a, an age where you think someone is physically and emotionally probably ready to use steroids in life? Yeah, I was training 10 years before using steroids. Right. I was using supplements for uh, three years yeah. or four years. Uh, and I think I wanted more. Okay, I, I told to my first mentor, I can't break my, I mean, I've reached my, my peak. I cannot grow more yeah. uh, and be lean together. He said, so now you're ready to receive the gear, you know? Mm. How old were you? I was 26. I was 175 with 7%. And within exactly one year, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was, um, one eighty five with seven percent again. Yeah, so it was, yeah, it was ten pounds, uh, solid pounds. But this was because I was very hungry for that, and my joints and my receptors were fresh. The gear back then was all pharmaceutical grade. Mm. Yeah, what was it? And you you could buy it in the pharmacy, right? Legally. Yeah, but I was getting also from other countries like Bulgaria. And I was taking Dianamol. Oh. We switched from Spain. Yeah. We have Pimobola in Greece. Uh, uh, Halo testing from USA. Yeah. All right. And we had testosterone and Deca from Greece. And I get Anabar from Italy. It was the real deal. Come on. Are you kidding me? No bullshit. Yeah. I mean, the was it Norma? Is that the company that made the Greek the Greek Deca? No. Back then, it was just a viral from Bayern from Germany, the best in the world. You know? Yeah. yeah. That was uh, – trying to remember who made that. Testoviron was uh Mario Sherian. Yes, yes, that was good stuff. Came in the brown amps. And and Kim Bolan also, the pot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to this week's questions. This one I had to break up into four pieces. My TRT has always been 100 to 150 milligrams of testosterone per week, which guarantees me 1,000 nanograms on the seventh day ap after application. Mm -hmm. so I imagine I should maintain an average of 11 to 1,200 nanograms during the week. I recently reduced it to 100 milligrams of testosterone, and in the blood test on the seventh day, the result was 650 nanograms. I did this reduction to try to maintain the safety of the treatment. However, I felt exhausted, tired from training, unmotivated, and with low libido. Is this dose of 1,200 safe as TRT uh, nanograms, so that blood level of 1,200 nanograms safe as TRT for life? Because I've already tried reducing it to 100 milligrams and I always have symptoms of low testosterone. Yeah, I mean, safety of what? Of erythrocytosis, of, of a soreness in your nipples, 
of blood pressure, I don't find any risk for that. I mean, people react differently to testosterone. Others are blessed not to increase their hematocrit over 45. Other use 250 or half a gram of testosterone and don't have sore nipples. And uh, uh, neither, uh, you know, gyno or hair thinning or acne. So I believe 1200 is very good because we have to consider 50 years ago, the top levels in the labs was about 1400. So you're really good with 1200 as long as you don't face erythrocytosis. Well, even in erythrocytosis, if the platelets are low, you don't, uh, you don't consider it to, to be something dangerous. Platelets is the key factor for thrombosis. Oh, wow. And now, soreness in your nipple. Sometimes you, you feel sore, even though E2 is low. And low means below 50 when total testosterone is below 1,000. And even though prolactin also is low, some people feel soreness. In that case, you need to occupy the receptor by using the serum, okay? But you don't need to lower more the estrogens, okay? You don't need to press the estrogens in order to feel touchy nipples, okay? Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, and, you and Dr. O'Connor both always say, you know, check the, the numbers are one thing on your blood, blood work, but you always want to say, how do you feel? Because if you're asymptomatic, like my estrogen gets high, and I've been using an AI, but I'm thinking of just stopping the AI because I don't have any, even when my estrogen is high, I don't have any symptoms that would make me need to lower my estrogen. So maybe yeah. I'm just taking an AI for nothing. I remember people were paranoid about the estradiol. And even though they were not symptomatic, they were taking some AI. And the day after, they felt crappy. They felt so tired. Yeah. Uh, they killed their dick. So uh, you need, of course, some estrogens for a good direction, for a libido. So always you have to be driven by your um, symptoms. Yeah, and it also, the AIs crash your good cholesterol too, correct? Your HDL? Yes, of course. Yeah, and they weaken your tendons. They're horrible. You get crappy joints because estrogens may lubricate your joints. Yeah. You don't have good mood because estrogens consider, uh, I mean, participate in the good mood because they're related also with serotonin. Yeah. And uh, of course, the antigen receptors need some estrogens to have a higher affinity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, without estrogen, you're not really going to grow. That's why during bulking, we need aromatizing estrogens to grow, not just because of this bulking effect of the retention, but because steroids work better with estrogens. Yeah. So, you know, you've said this many times. Estrogen is not the enemy. It just has to be kept in the proper, proper ratios to the testosterone. So, yeah. You don't want zero estrogen, guys. Horrible. Okay. Another... There's another blood blood work type of question. This is about liver values. Has anyone ever seen raised ALT from taking GH at two IUs per day fasted? No, I don't think so. But ALT can increase easily from training. Come on. Mm, yeah, I mean. Or, or drinking so many uh, amino acids because they pass through the liver. But this is some, not, not something considered to be toxic or to be, um, you know, worried about. I mean, it, your your ALT because you train all the time is your ALT usually raised? Yeah, I'm getting also one provider every day all year round, so perhaps it's, uh, it's close to fifty. That's not a big deal for a doctor. Come on. <laughs> when, when do you want to worry? What number do you, would you worry about? Three digital, definitely. Okay, three digits. So, so you got to. Digital is the effect of abdomyolysis. After COVID pandemic, I I was restricted from training for one hundred days precisely. I went back to the gym, my CK went up to 5,000, and both my LTLST were three digital. Wow. I went, I went to have, um, you know, an MRI in my liver, and everything was clear. So. Wow. Yeah. You didn't have your home gym back then? Yeah, it was all back three weeks now. I them and I have another multi-machine, you know, with cables. Yeah, yeah. Good, because yeah. I, I can't believe you went 100 days without training, because you always had weights. At home. You know, I mean, everybody was surprised by shutting down the gyms globally. Yeah. And yeah, it's funny because all my, you are, we have Facebook memories that come up from like, it was like four years ago exactly today my gym opened up after being shut down since, you know, March. So March, April, May. We were down for like four months. March, April, May, June, July, five months almost. Yeah. 
Thank God it's over. All right, our final question, Doc. Here we go. Hi, Doc. My creatine kinase is 900, and the limit is up to 300. Can you tell me how to lower it and why it's like this? I have an appointment with a cardiologist soon. Now, cardiologists will estimate your CKMB fraction that refers to the heart. But when a cardiologist, well, I mean, sees 900, he, his mind goes to myocardial infarction with a heart attack because muscle, heart, and liver are they regulate with the same ALT AST. Hmm. All right, that's why you need to have uh, an open minded doctor that sees you have a rhabdomyolysis, okay, if you train, and then you have also elevated liver enzymes. Now, in order to differentiate and clarify between myocardial infarction or overtraining, you need to see a protein called troponin. When troponin elevates, you have a heart attack. And now when you have liver enzymes and somebody you visit the hepatologist, he differentiates from uh, liver damage, liver, you know, a disease from GGT, which is a holostatic enzyme. Yeah. But in this case, rest, 48 hours and will go down. Hmm. Sleep, eat well. And by the way, if you're an addict guy and your CK is over a thousand, you're simply, you're breaking down your body. Hmm. You're metabolizing, okay? Unlike when you use steroids, it goes up, but you have this anabolic environment that will protect your muscles. Yeah. So you mentioned the troponin levels when you're up having a heart attack, because I don't remember what the level was, but you know, Giles, Giles, our buddy, Giles yeah. Thomas, he had a heart attack two years ago, and he yeah. told me the troponin level was the room, so yeah. crazy high. So that's mm -hmm. scary. Very cool. That is all our – those are all our questions for this week, Doctor. Uh, guys, remember, if you like this show, please subscribe, like, share, ring that notification bell. This is a very, very fortuitous thing we have every week to have a chance to talk to a doctor who is also a champion bodybuilder. So please support the show. Go to Amazon.com and get the Bible of Bodybuilding 2. So much information in here, guys. A lot of the questions you ask, if you read this book, you'd already know the answers. So give yourself the gift of knowledge and an education. And Dr. Tulialis, thank you so much for taking the time once again to help out all these viewers around the world. Guys, we appreciate your viewership. So please share and tell your friends about the show. Thank you, George. We will see you next time right here on Ask Dr. Testosterone. Thanks.